back to Revelation 22 first. Revelation 22. Please, can you bring your Bibles? Are we all here with your Bibles? Yes, sir. Okay, let's start from Revelation 22. We take from there and move ahead. Revelation 22, verse number 7, 12, and verse 20. Revelation 22, verse number 7. I read from the King James. Verse number 7, we take verse 12 and verse 20. Verse 7 says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saints of the prophecy of this soul. Behold, I come quickly. So Christ is coming soon. Christ, we are living in the end time, is coming soon. Verse number 12 says, verse 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, and me to keep every man according as he, as he is. What shall be? Verse 20 says, verse 20 says, He which certified these things says, Say, surely I come quickly, and in so come Lord Jesus. So we come quickly, come Lord Jesus. So Jesus Christ is coming soon. He is the one, I come quickly. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to the book of Revelation 7, Revelation verse number 2, number two Revelation 2, Revelation 2, verse number 1 to 7. Remember, Re Revelation 2, verse 1 to 7. We began by looking at the subject, Christ is coming back soon. Friends, the church has a responsibility to inform us and remind us of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us fix our minds on the things above, not on the plan of the early days. Let us fix our minds things above, not the things on earth. Because when you are focused on the things on earth, the early things, you will be distracted. Uh, if you are focused on the things on earth, the money, the feeling, you will be distracted. The Christ wants us to be focused on the heavenly things. For Christ is coming soon. Jesus is coming. We are living in the end time. The book of Revelation is not a mistake. It's real. It's that Jesus is just what God is saying to the end time and to me. Behold, I come Revelation 1, sorry, chapter 2, verse 1 says, Unto the angel of the church. Revelation 2, one, it says, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write this thing, say, He that holdeth the seven stars in his hands, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden lamp, says, The soul. I know that works at that level. And that patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them lies. Verse 3. And has borne and has patient, and for my name's sake has never and has not fainted. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have something against thee, because thou hast left thy first one. Verse 5. Remember therefore where thou hast fallen and, uh, be, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly. Again, we see, I will come unto thee quickly. And do what? I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Father, bless you, what is happening? Jesus, never repent. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at the subject of uh, the church, the seven churches. Hallelujah. We're going to be looking at the study of all the seven churches. The seven churches. What does the seven churches represent? What do they represent? What is it? Uh, the symbol of it. Am I included or talks about the church as a building or how to address the believers? It's addressing believers in the end time for Christ is coming soon. The seven churches speaks about the church, of course, the end time. So you can be a church among the seven churches. But in, in due course of our studies, let's see who falls away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we go back to Revelation chapter 1, go to verse number 20. Revelation 1, verse 20. Please, this is Bible study. So, we're going to check this. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 20. So, verse 20, Revelation 1, 20. In Revelation 2, verse 1 to 2 or 3, it talks about the same thing. Are we together? Bible stars. So Revelation 1 verse 20 says, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou seest are the seven churches. So we have 
have the seven angels to the seven churches. Which means that each church has an angel. Which means that every true church of God has an angel assigned to God. Every true church of Christ Jesus has an angel assigned by Jehovah. I will tell you. So there's an angel. Every ordained church of God has an angel from Jehovah. The records of that church. He knows those who are titans. He knows those who are so sick. He knows those who never from your heart. He knows those who are doing activities. Everything is recorded. He knows our words. He knows what you are preaching. He knows the most of your preaching. And everything is recorded. And the books will be open. Your book, my book, will be open. The angel of the church. This is what I was So some of us, when we come to each other, we are chatting on what's up. The angel is recording that against your account. We all have an account. I have an account. If I put something here out of my own motive or against it or to exalt it, it will be recorded against me in my own account. Whether I like it or not, it's an end of the records. So be careful. But it does not save. 
It's the righteousness of God upon our lives that helps us that are credited before the Father, as justified before the Father. Not your heart, not your words. It's by grace and by the mercy of God. Always. Hallelujah. He says, I know your works. I know your works very well. He says, and he says, you have tried people who call themselves apostles, but you found them liars. Does that make sense? This is what you've got to He says, you have tried them. They claim to be apostles, but you found that they were liars. Why were they liars? Let's go to scriptures. Can we all go to Galatians chapter number one? Galatians 1, please open your Bibles. Please, we should come with writing materials so that when pastor speaks, you write it down, you go back and search the scripture. This is true what we are saying here. Please, I beg you. I beg you. Get the writing material, not paper. Not paper. Get, it, get, your, get a book, get a Bible, get a pen. Write down the scriptures. Go back home and check what the pastor said. Is it true? So that you can be thoroughly equipped, be perfect, mature in the things of God. Because we are living in the end time when the session is real. Even in church. Please show your Bible. Know your Bible. Know the scriptures. Are we all there? So in Galatians 1, verse 18 says, Galatians 1, verse number 8. Sorry, verse number 8. Sorry. sorry. Galatians 1, 8. Galatians 1. 8. Okay, let's start with verse number 7. Galatians. 1 verse 7. Let's start verse 1 7. It says, 7 says, which is, okay, let's go up to verse number 6. So, okay, let's start from number 6 and read down to verse number 9. Galatians 1 verse number 6. So, to better understand what Paul was saying to the Galatians. It says, I am astonished that you are quickly deserted. Now, remember, we are trying to look at it says you have tried the apostles and you found them liars. You tried them and found the liars. So why were the apostles found to be liars? Why? Why were they found to be liars? What meant them to be liars? Galatians 1, verse number 6, 7, 8. Are we all there? It says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserted. The one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. You are turning to a different gospel. Verse number 7. Which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the true gospel. The gospel of Christ Jesus. The good news. You see, some people are trying to pervert the good news. They are trying to divert, dilute the word, which is not possible. So we try the apostles. They were found to be liars by the God. They are perverting the scriptures. They are diluting the scriptures. They are saying what is not true. Many be true. This is the end time. Please know about it. Verse number. Verse number 8. But if we are an angel from heaven, this is Paul right This is our support. If we or an angel from heaven comes with another kind of gospel, don't accept it. Is it your Bible? Hello? Is it your Bible? It says, but, it says, but even, an emphasis, even if we, we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we have preached to you, let him be eternally possible. What did Paul preach? Paul preached Christ. He preached the name of Jesus. He preached about the kingdom of God. Paul preached Christ Jesus. He preached the name of Jesus. And he preached the kingdom. So also, uh, Philip, check the apostles. This is what they preach. They preach Christ. They preach the name of Christ. Jesus and the preacher kingdom. Hallelujah. Today we don't preach Christ. Jesus is not being preached, nor the kingdom of God. All gospel today. Let me say all, but in most cases, it centralizes on showing 
and repair, mature benefits. I may be wrong in proving scriptures. The end time. Check what is happening. It is centralized on material things. Not Christ Jesus, not even repentance, not even holiness, not even eternity. Christ is coming soon. So we found the apostles why as why? Because they preach another gospel. Did you say the Bible? Now, go with me to the book of open second Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 4. Please learn this just and go and study verse number 4. 11 verse 4. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. Are we on that? So we are looking at the, we are studying the church of Ephesus. Where Paul is addressing them to be very careful. So the church of Ephesus can be a person, can be based on a believer, can be me, can be you. Then let's study it and see where we fall. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4, I mean, it says, for if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than Jesus who preach. Did you see that? Yes, sir. Preaches a Jesus other than Jesus Christ who preach. This is Paul saying again. He wrote a letter to the Galatians. And now he's writing to the Corinthians. We have first Corinthians, second Corinthians, and book of Galatians. So he first wrote to the Galatians, now and again he sorry, to the to the Corinthians. First John 4, 
verse number 9 to 12. 1 John 4, verse number 9 to 12. Are we there? 1 John 4, 9 to 12. Sorry, I'm using King James. I'm using King James and NIV. 9 to 12. Verse 9 says, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Are we there? That's the sign. God sent his only begotten Son into the world. Now remember, John 3 is saying, For God so loved the world that he he, for God to know the word that he gave his own name, that whosoever shall not but So we go back to the same scripture which is time here. He said, God gave his own name, God is so that it's the word that we may live to him. After chapter 17, verse number 28. In him I live and move and have my in Christ we live and move and have So if you put Christ out of the church or out of your life, your life will become a mess. In Christ we live. So God said his only begotten son into the world that seen as my lead to him, to Christ. You can never live on your own if Christ is not in your life. The life of God is in the Son Jesus Christ. So when you accept Christ, you have it as a Lord and Savior, you automatically have that the righteousness and the life to show that God be imprinted into you. Not because you work hard, not by the works, by faith. And by faith and by the grace of God. And I can say by his mercy as well. Because it's only by his mercy. So it's only his mercy. There are two things, grace and mercy. If you take away mercy, I will not stand. Yes, sir. I don't know about you. It's not a mercy. It's a mercy. So he says, verse number, verse number 10. 1 John 4 10. Let's watch it. Here it is love, not that we love God. We never loved God before. We never loved God. He loved us first. Remember, God is love. Love is God's nature. For God is love. Are we there? So we never love God first. He loved us first. Scriptures. Verse number 10. Here is love, not that we love God, but that God, but that He loved us and sent His only Son, His Son, to be a propitiation for our sins. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. One another. He loved us. He loved us. So we are looking at what was the problem in the church of Ephesus. They diverted from their first law. They took away their first law. They divorced their first law. And Christ said, that's what I do. Are we together? Are we together? Okay, go on to the book of Jeremiah chapter number 2. Jeremiah 2. I am already there. Verse number 2. I am already there. Please let us turn your Bible so that when you turn and you know where you are going to. Jeremiah 2, verse number 2. Chapter 2, verse 2. Are we already after Isaiah, we are Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse number 2. Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse number 2. Are we going? It says, Go and point in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thy Epistles, this is King James. When thou wentest after me and in the wilderness, in the land that was not so. Let me read from the end. This is King James. The grammar is tough. Hallelujah. <laughs> the grammar is really King James. 
Let me read from the Amen. Jeremiah 2, verse number 2. And I like says, He said, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. I remember the devotion. I remember the devotion of your youth. They were devoted to Jehovah. They were devoted to Elohim. From their youth, they were devoted. Why? Because of love. When you love the person, you are devoted to them. When they love God in the altar of the testament, they were devoted to Jehovah. He said, one well, cry to their ears. Let them remember that. He says, How as a bride you love me. Did you see that? He said, How as a bride. Now remember, the bride is the wife, and the man is called the bride. I was there. The man, during wedding, the woman is called the bride, and the man is called the bridegroom. So Christ Jesus is our bridegroom. We are married, the church is married to Christ. He is the head. We are the body. Are we together? Christ is the head and we are the body. So we are called the body of Christ. And I began by saying that the body is built upon the principle, the purpose of the head. The body must be built on the head. So the body of Christ must be built on the purpose and must please the head. So a church, a true church, must be built by Christ and must please Christ alone. Not pleasing the person, not pleasing the members, no sanoma. A true church pleases the founder, the one who is the foundation. And if Christ is truly the solid rock or the sure foundation of your life, your life must be pleasing to him and him. So we have the bride who is the wife. The church, me and you, we are the bride. And we have the bridegroom who is Christ Jesus. So the bridegroom is soon coming. Christ is coming soon. So he's addressing the bride to get ready for the marriage. Because rapture is soon. Heaven is soon. Hell is soon. Without Christ in your life, you can't see it. Pardon So the bride is the woman. The church, the believers are the bride. Him, Christ is called the bride. So he says, so he says, how the bride loved me. When they were young, from their youthful days, the bride loved me. This is Christ, this is God, this is Jehovah saying. Go and try, go and try them to remember that when they were young, they used to love me, how they loved me. This is God telling them. To go and try to their ears, to them to remember. Come to remember, come to their senses. And he said, and follow me. So they love him and they follow him. Really today, are we following Christ? Talk to me, sir. Are we following Christ today as individuals? Are we following Christ today? It shows in your lifestyle. Because anyone that follows Christ today, you see it in the lifestyle. They don't need to tell you, but from the lifestyle you see it. Like this one truly follows Christ now. It's a lifestyle. And not in church, because in church we all are sinners. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We all are sinners in church. The one we step out of the church compound. Who are we? Who are we to our fellow brothers and sisters? How do we relate to them? Are we good hearted all that we can? Some of us are good hearted only in church. Once we step out of church, we become another preacher. And we say we love God. It's not true, sir. I'm not judging, I'm not condemning. I'm just coming, I'm using the scriptures to bring to life something. For Christ is coming soon. And these things will be held against us. So please, you have to discover it by the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, they loved me and they followed me. Through the land, they were following Christ because of nothing. Jesus says, if you love me, do. Obey my commandments if you love me. Obey them. So, the church of Ephesus threw away their first one. He said, what a Now, may I answer this question? When we became born again, the first time we received Christ, what was the zeal towards the things of God? What was your zeal towards Christ? What was that zeal, the love? Now, look at the love before for Christ and the love now. Has it increased or depreciated? Don't tell me this. A condition came and I deviated. 
they start commission the serving God. But don't put excuses before God. Yes, because I slept too much, I could not pray. Nah, it's not so. A soldier for God, a, a military man, no man, need to wash up and only the military so that they don't sleep. You may want to, but the Lord says you're not supposed to. And any time they can say, oh yeah, thank you, yeah, you are good. You will not ask the commander, why not give me some time to sleep a little bit? I will wake up, I will go. A minute ago, they say, go, you go. Even when they are shooting, they say, go, you have to go. Yeah, go. Yes, in the, in, I'm talking about the physical military. Are we together? He says, so Christ is saying, we left him some time ago. We left him long time. We abandon him. We no longer love him. Then we serve him. Now, how can you serve a man you don't love? How can we be serving somebody we don't love? We abandon long time ago and we claim to serve him. No, we are not serving him. No, no, sir. Because how do you abandon somebody and you say you are serving the person? So we see that you are not serving him. Are we together? So now we see that because you are not of Christ, you are no more serving Christ, you are serving men. Not a person. Are you now becoming men princess? You began in the spirit. You began in the spirit. But look at what you are doing now. Please men. Why? Paul had to come into address this issue. The church of the church of talk to me. So the church of Okay, so that was what he held at least. Now go to verse number five. Let's go back to Revelation uh, two, verse five. Are we getting something this afternoon? Yes, sir. Revelation two, verse five says. Remember, therefore, from where thou hast fallen, repent and do the first works, or I will come and remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. Except thou repent. So they have, they are three things there. Number one is remember. Remember where thou art fallen. Number two is repent. And do the works you used to do before. Repent and be sinners for Christ. Repent and go after Christ. Repent and turn after Christ. Let your soul, Psalm 42, verse 1. Uh, let your soul pant after Christ as the day parted for what? Repent and go back to that place. Are we the church of Ephesus? Or we are not the church of Ephesus? Let's go. Hallelujah. So, the first works they used to uh, do service, they used to offer service to Christ. Now, they used to wash many things. They used to uh, sow, prayers, giving. But it says their hearts were not with him. All these things were beautiful. All these things were good. But their hearts were not with Christ. For us. Hallelujah. Let's go to John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2. We are looking at the church of Ephesus. We are studying those who are saying now. We are taking a study of the seven churches. The seven churches is in time. John 2, I'm already there. John chapter number 2, verse number 13. John 2, 13. Are we all? We are looking at that. We are, we are having a study on the seven churches. And Christ is coming back soon, so we are looking if we are part of these churches or if we identify with these churches, what will be our strength that God, that Christ praised? He tried them for their strength. What were their weakness when He held against them? He can be speaking to you or to me. The scripture can be addressing you or me. Are we all there? John chapter 2, verse number 13. And rend your hearts and not your garments. And turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious 
merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repent from evil. Repent from evil. Bring your hearts and not your bodies. So he's telling them, he said, number one, remember where you fell from. Number two, repent. How do you repent? You must rent your heart. And he says, 
love me? You said, no, I don't. Pastor, yes, your lifestyle will show if you love God or you don't. If you're not a lifestyle, you don't love God. If I go in cheating, you don't love God. It's sad. What you do, you show love. If you have the heart that we can have that, you want only you and not to succeed. Let every other person say the heart is okay. Why should you say you and not to succeed? Every other person should feel. That's a wicked heart. Hallelujah. Because a good heart, the Bible says, let no man exalt himself above another man. Brother, we should exalt others. And how do you exalt others? You have to love others. Love the Lord your God. He said, and also love our fellow brothers like yourself. The first commandment, love the Lord. So if you don't love God Almighty, how do you love your fellow brothers? It's not possible. If you don't love Christ, you can never love a fellow human being. Let's be honest with ourselves. Because, remember, we have differences. We have differences. We come from different nations. All from the same nation. Different clans, different villages. Everything different. Okay, we are from the same family neighbor. We have different families. Yes, sir. So we are, so we are going to be here differently. So how do you meet all with everybody's behavior at the same time? Remember, man is not an island. You live with people, man. You, you associate with people. So how do you function without any problem? That's what our different point of view. Love is important. For love covers more than love. So how would that be possible if there's no love? It's only when you love God first. You can never love men first, not his God first. It's the love of God in your heart that makes you love men. If you don't have the love of God in you, you can never love men. Church, wake up. Because in the end, we live in a world where people will hurt you every day. Have you realized that the more pain you are, the more people hurt you? The more pain you are, the more people hurt you. The more pain you have, the more people misuse or interpret your millions. The more pain you have. Don't you know that? Yes, sir. So people now they commit the strategy using the fact that this person is good to repent them evil. Now in that case, what do you do? Do you repent evil to them? If you have the heart of Christ and love God, He said, never repent evil for evil. Talk to yourself. Yes, sir. If you repent evil, evil for evil, you are not a body, you are not a child. Yes, sir. Pastor, look at what they did. About what the scripture says. What I did might not be good, but let me go to this. I start on the scripture. Because if I want to go by judgment, we shall we will take the scripture aside. And when you take the scripture aside, we all are failed. Talk to me somewhere. Yes, sir. This is the manner of our day, the manner and the directive. This one should be in front of us. This book of the Lord should not depart from our hands day and night. So whatever I say, whatever I do, this should be the leading, the commander. The word of God. This one. Hallelujah. Remember we are looking again at the church of the church of the church of so one thing the Lord held against them because they abandoned their first law. Verse 1 says, I will come quickly unto thee and remove the candlestick. It talks about judgment. When the candlestick, now it's what me. A candlestick, we all know candle. The candlestick is there and the candle is there. So when they remove the candlestick, the candle will not stand. Therefore, when they remove the candlestick, they will be darkness. That talks about judgment. Darkness is judgment. Condemnation. If you don't repent and come back and love me, Christ, I will come and remove your candlestick. Not I will send him. He said, he said I will send him. Listen, that the Lord said he himself will come and remove it. So when God judges a man, you are gone. 
Please, let us not take the Lord for granted. I beg you. This is an interview. Don't take the things of Christ for granted. Rather, fear God, reverence Him. For this is the whole duty of God. Fear God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue with this. So, he says, I will make a kind of talk about judgment. Verse number six. Verse six, we have to pray. Verse number six of that same. Uh, let's go back to Revelation chapter number two. Verse 6, I'm reading. Revelation 2, verse 6. Revelation 2, verse 6. This is Bible study where we have to check the scriptures. If what we are saying ties with the scripture. If what we are saying is in line with the scriptures. If what we are saying makes sense from the scriptures. Revelation 2, verse number 6. Are we there? Verse 6. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of Nicolaitans, which I hate. This is a compliment. Is that it? It is. This is a compliment. He said, You hate the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which most I hate. It's a compliment. He was complimenting him again. Doctrine of Nicolaitans is simply a doctrine where they use the word of God to control. They use the word of God to manipulate people. They use the word of God to put people on suspicion and bondage. Who are those people? 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 He says. The false apostles will trap them and fall into the lies because they are teaching another doctrine of promise. Verse number two of Revelation two, verse two, he said. Revelation two, verse two to six, he said. The false apostles will try them. So he said, verse number six again. Let's go back and see. But thou hast you heard the beat or the practice of, of the Nicolaitans. Which is, they use the word of God to manipulate people. Use the word to manipulate people. This part looks very good. This part is good for this church, for the ministry, the work of God. So this part, and God will bless you. So the manipulation is not from the backside. It's from the people. This job is good for this ministry. Come and sow. Now, this is a man telling you to sow. Not God. It is better for Jehovah to speak to you as the person. That is where the blessing comes. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you to sow something, that is beautiful and it brings the blessing. But when a person uses the word of God or their authority, not the word, because the word in front does not put them under bondage. Talk to me, sir. The word of God actually does not put us under bondage. The word is Christ and the word became flesh. Talk to me, sir. It's a wherever the spirit of the Lord is, the spirit. So the word is there to reprove us, to rebuke us, to teach us and to correct us. So if the word is there to teach us, correct and rebuke us, why should the sun work put us on that page? It doesn't work. Sun so the Bible. Please know the Bible for yourself. Are we together? So go and show this star. The time looks good for the ministry, for the work of God. So now we use our authority of position to manipulate people and convert their properties for the name of preaching the gospel. Outside. Come and sow this money and you shall be blessed. Please don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong to sow to the kingdom of God. Sit down and have it. And God said, Don't you sow. Again, when you are led by the Spirit of God, I repeat, when you are led by the Spirit, please go. That's what the blessing is. When you are led by the Spirit of God, then when you 
ya pato Nicolaitans they use the, the scriptures to put people under bondage and subjection bondages hello I said hello do you know that it's because of greed that we go into that this thing to do rubbish do you know that because of greed if a man is greedy they go to the extent of doing anything to have money to prove it and maintain the status talk to this one in the court of greed greed when a man is greedy they can go to any extent to whatever to have the money to prove a point that I'm a people and to maintain the status because of greed but if the Bible says if you are contented with what you have you will be better if you are contented and manage the living you have, you need a better life. Please be contented and manage what you have. I didn't say that level is okay. That's what I don't say that. You can be better. Things can be better. Press to be better. Then you change. You change. Hello. You change. Hallelujah. All right. Let's start. Look at the device you are using for power. This is four years. This is for us. Look at our device for camera. I'm sure it has been shocking to many people, even first cameras. What kind of church is this? That's a good question. Hello? Have you asked that question to yourself? Let's be honest. Have you asked that question? Brothers, have you asked that question? Hello? I said hello. Please let's be honest. Have you asked a question? Look at hey, is that the, what device is that? Ah. No. In this morning day, yes, sir. We are contented with what we have. And we use it. Whatever you see on YouTube comes from only this device. Only. Let's talk to this one. Whatever, we, whatever you see on YouTube is there's no laptop. Only this thing you see produces whatever you see on. Only this thing you see produces whatever you see on YouTube. Are the pictures colorful? Is it very clear? Yes. Sir. So, Alright. You, 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 you. You will give me 500 pounds every month. Who want to buy a car? Uh, Is that beautiful or no? Talk to me some. Huh? We are quiet. Yeah. Hello? Is that beautiful or no? Let's change this car. Huh? Talk to me some. Is that beautiful? Now, we said, okay, you pay 500 every month for the next four months. 500, 500, 500. So you are now putting a tax on people. Not that they want it. You are letting them because of your authority. Are we together? Yes, sir. Maybe you have a, you have a plan to buy land in the next four, four months. You are trying to raise the money by four months to buy the land. And I come and say, the next one will be 500, be 500. And I, I even bring a book to write to them and sign it. Because Pastor said, it, it, maybe God, God is speaking. God did not speak. <laughs> if he wants to provide him, touch the way to do it. Would I want to see? So we are not contented nowadays. We want to compete with A, B, C. A has a bigger camera. C has it. And you should not buy something. Now, uh, how much is the offering here? Oh no, the offering is so now. Let's do what? Let's start manipulating people to get money from them. Extortion. No longer putting coins. Man. Nicolaitans. Are you learning something? Yes, sir. Talk to me. Are you learning something? Yes, sir. Please, we are contented with this thing. You see. bring camera, we will not take it. And we will not take it. If you brought it before, we will take it. If you bring it now, we will not take it. Let this be. Let this be. Brother, we should look in how your life can be better. Yes, sir. How you have to be better in the spiritual things. How you can be going spiritually, mature in spiritual things. Likewise, also, how your physical life can be better. Some of you need to get married. Yes, sir. You need to push it. Yes, Some of you need to reverse it. You need to push it. Yes, sir. That's more important than going to buy a device that we used to want to be. Sir, I went to check for a device in uh, this thing. The device at that top is almost 10,000 dollars. Now, should we start letting people because of the device? Talk to me, somebody. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. This produces the same thing that the device produces. So why should we let people? Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans.
idolaters. And they will prove to you a point. And we all say, it's true. Ah, uh, come on, it's good to party for you. Come on. The point is clear. The Lord, what is the motive? You are subjecting people on that point. They were not ready for that. Manipulating people in church. Nicolaitis. Remember what I said? The church of Ephesus. The church. Not the market, not the beach, not the club, not the supermarket. The church of Ephesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes when I look at this device myself and I look at the pictures, they are this. Nobody will believe. Thank God he's here. A brother, the one I'm born, wonderful cameras and laptop. Is that true? And their quality was not up to our own. And he himself was here, he was a son. He came to me, sir. He said, only this thing you are using to put this as a son. He said, no, that I asked his brother, he said, yes. I want to confirm from you, sir. I said, it's only what you see. He says, not true. I said, this is only. So the way I spend money for nothing. Why are we trying to be before the outside? We want the inside is not okay. So I change your heart first. Then we'll change your heart. Amen. Yes, sir. Put your hands in your hand. Change your heart first. Not the power. Raise your heart to Christ. Leave the town alone. Change your heart first. On the left of this thing, not the right one. You are the ones to stand judgment. Come on, no stand judgment. I didn't put this to policy, so it's a thing. But you will stand judgment. The church of everything is not the camera. It's you. It's you. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we going to do this after you? So manipulation and submission, which is common in this end time. Come on in the end time. So when you know the scriptures, you cannot be deceived. So go back to be Bible students. Go back to be Bible students. I tell God that since four years now, there is no worker that has been living 25 years. I stand on this altar. I stand on the altar to see. There is no worker in this church that has been living 25 years. That was asked one day for four years. Hello? I said hello. Have you ever seen two offerings apart from child dedication? Please talk to me. Have you ever seen two offerings apart from a, a child dedication and cancer? Once a year. Have you ever seen two offerings? Why do you want to put more that subjection and bondage financially? Why? What for? To prove it to you. Thank God he's blessing us. And the rest are going to be Today I'm going to pay the rates. The money is available. Put your hands together for the money. Put your hands together for the money. I appreciate the price. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate your whole life. I appreciate your whole life. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I appreciate the money. He's the one that's doing it. When I send you to the lab, no. Praise Christ. There are seven doctrines as well. Seven churches, we have seven doctrines. So we have to finish with the seven churches, and now we start looking at the doctrines. Hallelujah. Okay, let's continue this. Now there's one in here. Go back to Revelation 7. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Revelation 2, verse 7. Revelation 2, verse 7 says. What the spirit, capital S. Is it your Bible? Yes, capital S. Say it unto the church. Say it unto you. If you have ears, hear what he said to you. The rebuke is rebuking us of abandoning him as our first law. He said, Rebuke. That the spirit said unto the church, To him that overcome, I will give him to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of. Overcome. You cannot be an overcomer if the love of God is not in your heart. 
You get it. Because when you love Christ and you are in Christ, the love of God is shed upon your heart. Then you become a conqueror. We are more than conquerors to Christ. The love of God must be there. The love of God. So when you are serving God, it's because of the love of God. Not because pastor should pray. Or pastor should know me. Let man know the word. Let Christ be at the word. Don't put my services for passing to the world. I don't even have a reward money to the world any human being. Let Christ reward any man as well for his son. That's the best. The reward of men are limited. That of Christ is extremely and abundant. Hallelujah. So he says, let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, I am already there. Matthew 24, verse number. 12. Are we going? It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax full. The love, again, is love for many. For what? Poor soul. Love of many, poor stress, shall wax full, shall draw, shall diminish. Signs of the end time. That the revelation says, if you are in a hot not cold, I will spit you out. Christ is not cold. For God is the consuming fire. So fire is not cold, fire is hot. So he is preparing you to be hot for him. To be hot, to be on fire for Christ. And you cannot be on fire if you don't love Christ. If you live by the love of God, ladies and gentlemen, true love for Christ. If we all look and all remember that Christ died on the cross of Calvary, that alone should make us love him. Please hear me, child of God. No man, your father and mother, no man can stand for you and pay the price you pay. No man can do that. Your wife can never do that. I can never pay for her. Let me want to She can never pay that for me. Let, let's say the truth. Only Christ did it for us. So that alone should make us to love him. Seek it to me. Part of you to me. No money off him. No cars. The blessings is not the amount of cars you have. The blessing is Christ in me. Let's continue. Verse number 12. And because the iniquity is shut out, the law of men is shut out. Verse 13. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. So it means that the church of Ephesus, there was a possibility that they were not saved. Or they were not saved in the end. If they refuse to repent, would they be saved? Talk to me. If they refuse to repent, he will say, I will remove your penalty. But if you repent, they will be restored by Christ. Are we getting something? Yes, hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Let's go on to... Okay. Remember the three things. Number one, remember where you fell from. Number two, repent. And number three, return. Okay, let's go on to Hebrews chapter. Uh, let's go to... No, Jude. Because it's close to Revelation. Jude 21. Jude verse 21. After Jude is the book of Revelation. Jude before Revelation. Verse 21. There are some people like Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, 16. Talks about come, let's come holy to the throne of grace that we may find grace and obtain mercy in time of need. But I want to use because it's close to Revelation. Jude verse 21 says, Keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Christ wants the church of Ephesus to have eternal life. That's his desire. If I want to eat your repent. Are we together? Christ desired the church of Ephesus to have eternal life if they repent. Now, listen to me, child God. 
Because he said, Christ loved the children of Jesus. That's why he even told them their wrong way. To whom God loves, he trespasses them. When God loves you, he trespasses you. He will correct you what? Because he loves you. So when he shows you your fault or your mistake, take it and repent. He wants to repent. He wants them to make eternal life. He says, let me watch this one. Verse number 21 again. He said, keep yourself from, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's no mercy out of Christ. It's Christ who gives mercy or shows mercy. Why? Because eternal life is what is it? He shows us mercy so we can have eternal life. So if there's no mercy, nobody can see it. In the beginning of the fall of the church of Ephesus, he tells them, this is your problem, so repent from that and come out of the you have to remember when you left Christ, you have to repent and you have to return to Him. Because if I remember, I repent, I don't return. It doesn't make sense. You must repent, then return to Him and start doing what you were doing before that was pleasing Christ, seeking Christ as God. With all your heart to God. The church of? The church of? All right, let's continue. My body goes. Signs showing you left your first love. Interesting. Are we learning something this afternoon? <laughs> what are the signs that I, not, I left my first love? What are the signs that the church of Ephesus? What are the signs that they left their first love? Number one. Number one. When you delight in someone else more than Christ Jesus. Are we all there? When you delight yourself to someone else, than Christ. The right means when you please someone greatly more than Christ, you let your first love. When you please somebody else more than Christ, it means you left your first love. Are we doing that? Are we pleasing him more than Christ? Talk to me someone. Are we pleasing him more than Christ? Or you are pleasing Christ more than me? Examine your life. He knows it all. Number one, you please people or someone else, or you delight in someone else for the purpose. Number two, sir, your soul does not desire a rich relationship with God. Your soul does not desire a rich relationship with Christ. Your soul. Which means that the things of God does not interest you. No. Means that person left the first one. Let us go into the house of the Lord, David says. I was glad when I was told, let us go. I was glad that person did not go. I was glad. We have trust today. Oh, hey, let's go. That person loves God. I was glad to go. Why? He loves God. Not so we say, let's go to church. Uh -uh. It's church I don't. Is it church today? Okay, I'll, I'll go next time. Okay, okay, if I, I'll get back to you, it's okay. That person. Is that your case? Ah, today my leg is saying I want to go to church. Because if you love a leg, even if your leg is saying, you will check and go in. Talk to me, sir. Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. Even if you know how many you will check and go I did. Hello? I said, no. There was one time I was broke. She never knew. There was a day I went to meet her in the hospital. I trekked on foot while I was living. I trekked. Four distance, I trekked on foot. I never knew, I, I never wanted her to know. I trekked one to a big boy. Someone said big boy. That's the truth, sir. I trekked. She never knew. When you're alone, you don't care about the distance. Distance is no barrier. In the street and the physical. In this case. I trekked her to the hospital. Okay, I'll be there at 7.30. I'll make sure I'm there before 7 o'clock. I go and hide somewhere under the AC. It will blow me over there. My body will cool. I go and refresh the back room. I'll look fresh and cool. Then I'll go back to Osa. I came up, I slept long time. I slept. She thought I just came by taxi. No, ma. I didn't come by taxi. I slept. You know what <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you know, there's no distance. I need it. So don't tell me my leg is ready to get, I won't go to church to go on Christ. Tell me that you love it. That I, I woke up my back is pain. I will not come today. Who has done it? If 
Il n'a pas mis ses micros. Parce que je dis, dans le moment où il est il n'a pas pris de visage. Laisse les choses. Laisse les choses. Laisse les choses. Laisse les choses. En réserve de moi, il faut taxer la poste. On n'a pas qu'à s'en mettre au snap. Snap de l'issue. Ah non, snap de l'issue. Ça va être des Non, faut des lances. Faut faire des lances. Our sin on the text, our faith, faith, come on. Look, our spark of the bank in Polish shop, say this, I will just go there, I'll just see my text. The money for taxi, I used to buy things for now. She never knew, she never knew. Why did she not see? She said, did you say? I said, I said, I like to exercise, to point to my friend. My friend, you are poor, you are poor, say the truth. Verses number 19. Are we on there? I am already there. 
John 15, 19. Are we there? John 15, verse 19. Number four, you strive for affirmation from the world rather than approval from Christ. You want the world to affirm you. You want the world to approve you, not Christ. So you are pleasing men for men to approve you, not Christ. Christ says, please me and I will approve you. You say that. Because you cannot be proven by Christ if you don't love Christ. The first four. So we, we want the world to approve us. We want men to clap for us than Christ to say, Well done, good and faithful. John 15, verse 19. Are we there? Yes, sir. Are we there? Something's happening. Yes, sir. He said, If you were of the world, and the world will love his own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So if the world hates you, what can the world be? So we are looking, we are looking at the world to approve us. And the world hurts you. Shift yourself. Christ the power of the world. Let it be the one to approve you. The one who is approving you is the one who is the chief judge. And no one will say the chief judge on that day. It's appointed for man to die once. Day after judgment. Judgment before who?
That's why by the grace of God, we do everything possible. If I may ask us, how much is the offering from this church? Have you asked that question? Talk to me, sir. Have you asked that question? Have you asked that question? How much is the offering of this church? No, let's be honest. I'm transparent. Hello. Transparency. Let's be honest. They will see what fast providing transportation. For men to come to the knowledge of Christ for free. Not for money. To come. So whatever you have an excuse, say, I do not know, I'm not here. Oh yes, they gave me transport. They said, no, okay. They, 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 they send the church to come you. They said, God is full of transport. You did not call. I said, the son is not. They gave permission, they rejected it. Because you are giving excuses not to come. I said, they want your money. It's not my amount. If we are putting money here, we shall have our big offer office every service. Hello, someone talk to me. If we are putting money or we are out for money, we should, uh, uh, we should be having at least two or three offices every service. To do what with the money? Talk to me. To do what with the money? If you can pay the rent, it's for us. We are not here to make money from anybody, not any deal. Can we pay the rent? Yes. Four years ago, we have not made any special offering. How many people have made any special offering? How many persons? Please talk to me. Wait your hand. Let's share your day and stop the truth. How many persons have a special offer that we have to stop? No, sir. Why are we saying this? We are living in the end time. The little we have in the church, we use it for men to come to knowledge. We invest it. We have Friday service and we have Sunday service. Do you know how much you pay? I'm going to be after the Sunday. What is it? It's expensive. But for a soul, that money is for the soul to talk to know that money is nothing. Money is nothing. But the soul is more precious to us than money. So Father seven is teaching. Are we learning something today? Yes, sir. So if there was no money, how would we pay for the whole? But has anybody been just no? The little that comes in, we, we, we manage it properly to pay all these things and everybody is comfortable. Hello? Hi. I say hello. Hi. It's not a, it's not a business thing. So what I was trying to say is, we become complacent towards sinful conditions. We enjoy sin, not righteousness. Mr. that the first one? In sin, in sin, you are happy. Mr. Sudan, the first one, first. If you dwell amongst sin and you are happy, you have no conscience. Your conscience is not beating you. Mr. Sudan, the first one, ever so who is first. Because if you love Christ, you will hate iniquity. Talk to me, son. If you love Christ, you will hate sin. Because sin is like you are, you are still crucifying Christ on the cross. The Father is crying. Why are you still crucifying my son on the cross? Why? Why? Your nature, your lifestyle is crucifying Christ again. Study the scriptures where Paul was saying. When you love Christ, when you love somebody, you will not hurt the person. Is that true? In the future, when you love someone, you don't hurt the person. You cherish them. You pet them. You love them. You appreciate them. You acknowledge them. They are worthy. They are valuable. Because you love them, you will not hurt them. So anything that will hurt them, you avoid it. Likewise, why do we hurt Christ all the time? In sin, we are conscious. We are happy. Our conscience is there. It means we hurt Christ first. Time. Do you hate sin? If you, if you love sin, we should get the first of Christ. For the love of many iniquities shall abound. When? The end. The love of many shall abound. The end. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. The second one and the last, you are unwilling to forgive your offenders. Before we get to the prayer session, he's going to be prepared for that. You are, you are unwilling to forgive your offenders. When you don't forgive, means you left your first love. When you don't forgive people, means you left Christ your first love. When you don't forgive. When you forgive, means you love Christ. When you love Christ, you love me. You love him. So when you love Christ, you forgive. So when you don't, when you have, when you have a man, it's unforgiveness. For this shall all men know that you, 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 you are my disciple. When 
the love one. So you cannot love and have all marriage against that same person. The same heart that loves, that same heart cannot have all marriage and unforgiveness. Man knows I know. No, sir. Those are one Holding grudges against others. Matthew 18, 21. As we end the last chapter before we end, this is the for the prayers. Matthew 18, 21 says, Are we doing something this afternoon? Matthew 18, 21. I'm already there. The name, I said, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times he was asking. Peter said, seven times? Christ said, no, Peter, don't fool me. Peter relaxed, no seven times. And Jesus answered him and said, I said unto thee, seven times, but until seventy times, seven. Peter said, seven times? Christ said, no. Check the figure. How many times? How many times? How many times? Seventy times? For how many sins? For the same thing. So if somebody kicks you, forgive them seventy times, seven times for that one. Just to get a touch please. Just to get a Please ask him for me. 